Hi folks, I'm back with another video. This time I have just bought Assetto Corsa Competizioni, which uh, everybody abbreviates to ACC. You can imagine why. Um, and I'm just going to compare briefly R Factor 2 with ACC and standard Assetto Corsa because not everybody's aware of what the differences are. I'm merely going to run through. Uh, what the menus and the, some of the setup options look like in each of them and a short driving sample of each one just sort of showing what the graphics look like. Uh, this has been done on Linux, Manjaro Linux running Wine with the standard Proton driver. So these all three are actually Windows only games but they're running fairly well on Linux complete with force feedback and so on on my Logitech G29 racing wheel. And on the top right, I will be including the Mango HUD stats so you can see how hard the CPU, the GPU and how the frame rate is running in each of the three games for comparison. I might be flying through some of the stuff fairly quickly, but you can pause or just rewind for anything of interest. Otherwise, it's going to be extremely long. So without further ado, let's start with R Factor 2. So the first thing you're going to notice here is the rather dated menus. Out of all three games, R Factor 2 is the oldest of the three. It came out in around, I think, March 2013, a year before Assetto Corsa itself. So uh, yeah, these menus are, are really dated now at this stage. This is the selection of cars. And one of the features with R Factor 2 is it's been around a long time. It is relatively open. So there are a lot of cars and tracks and other mods that are available for the game. You'll find you know, quite a wide range of, of quite interesting vehicles to, to try out. But now again on the menu, it's difficult to get a lot of stats and information around the cars. You, you sort of got to dive in, out, in, out to, to see what's going on. And you, you'll also see quite a lot of classic cars. Old uh, Cortina here and Aston Martins and, and various of the vintage racing cars. Uh, I would almost say that out of the three again, the it, R Factor 2 has probably got the biggest range of vehicles, third party anyway, vehicles and tracks and so on to play. So I think I'm going to choose the Porsche 911 because it is the same car I'm going to be driving in the two Seto Corsa versions of the game. Unfortunately we didn't have a Kailami track for Johannesburg, South Africa. There was a Kilani, but the Kilani Cape Town track is actually very badly rendered, so I didn't make use of that. I've decided to go for the Le Mans track in France. Uh, here's the loading of the game. And similarly, the tracks also, not a lot of really interesting information that you can see in the menus. So we'll start out at the pits here. And I'm just going to show also quickly some of the driving and other settings you can choose. These are the settings for the racing wheel and the controls. You can both the both uh, all sort of say all three games are very similar in terms of the number and variety of the settings and key keys you can set. All three's force feedback is working very well under Linux as well. Typically I'm also looking for tire settings to see whether I can set softer tires and semi slicks and so on. It's generally all I'm changing at this stage. And off we go. So you'll see there is a HUD here showing the essential info in the bottom middle and the tires at the bottom right. And it doesn't seem to make a big difference to R Factor 2 whether those are on or off. You'll see the on the, on the Mango HUD in the top right there the frame rate per second it's it'll pick up a little bit when we get out of the pits actually but it's not affected at all in fact probably out of all three games it might be the fastest running on Linux anyway and you'll see there already 160 frames per second and so on no problems with the frame rate and the other thing to notice there is that the graphics card is being fully utilized that's probably why the speed is um, so fast on the frame rates per second it makes very good use of the GPU so this is Le Mans I just get a feel also for what the inside of the Porsche looks like and the graphics here because we're going to compare now shortly with Assetto Corsa itself 
I should also say, if you look at the movement of the car on the road, Assetto Corsa is probably the worst of the three. ACC is probably nearly on par with R Factor 2. I'd almost still give R Factor 2 the edge in terms of the road feel. It's got this, you can feel the bumps and the movement and it feels almost like you can feel the friction on the road in fact it's, it's almost that good ACC is pretty close to that in fact um, and there's a good reason for that but otherwise yeah that's R Factor 2 really it's, um, it's, it's very enjoyable to drive and like I said a big variety of cars and tracks not the greatest graphics definitely dated so are the, the menus as well A bit rough riding here, just jumping in and out of cars with cold tires and, and different feel. But let's go on to a set of Corsa then. So this is a set of Corsa's loading screen. This game was released in December 2014, so it's about a year and a half later. And that'll become fairly obvious also even when you see the menus. These are the different modes of game. And these are the first menus. Here are the option menus. So you can set display settings, audio settings, and again controller settings. You'll see again for the wheel. On the bottom left, it confirms whatever buttons and so on you're pressing. You can just see which ones are, are being pressed. Uh, different audio settings. And then under the general, also what's of interest is these UI modules. So the one thing also with a set of Corsa just as widely supported in terms of third-party tracks, mods, and different apps like HUD apps and that sort of thing. So uh, it's also got quite broad support. The vehicles are of probably a better quality. If I just had to gauge, you know, a game for game, I'd say better quality game. Some interesting variety of vehicles here as well. Not as many as R Factor 2, but the quality is better. So especially of the third-party modules, you can see these were the, the Alfa Romeos. And you'll see MG there, Land Rover, some, some interesting vehicles. And I'm going to take the Porsche, again, 911 GT3. And we'll take the Kailami track in Johannesburg. Again, it's a little bit easier to choose your tracks and so on. The nice thing is they've got a very interesting variety of quality tracks, like Scotland, uh, Highlands tracks, and so on as well. So um, I'd also say maybe the quality of the tracks is also slightly better, actually. So let's, I suppose, get into the driving seat and see how she goes. So we're going to see similar options here for car setup. And I'll just quickly go through various of the settings and tweaks you can do. Again, I'll be looking for tire settings, and that is one nice thing with the set of course of this version. You can uh, easily choose between street tires, semi slicks, full slicks, that sort of thing, which makes quite a difference to the driving. off we go nearly there we go so just look at the graphics now as well because you want to compare this to ACC just now for the same track and the inside of the car graphics as well so you'll notice the set of course so I've got two apps on at the moment which is the sidekick in the bottom middle and the pro tires on the bottom right that does affect the frame rate per second you'll see we are getting a good 80 to 100 and something frames per second which is quite playable with that with the apps off it actually goes quite a lot faster so this game is affected quite drastically by the number of apps that you add to the HUD which is something just to bear in mind um, especially on Linux where it, it, it does a translation um, you know to work with the Linux graphics and so on so we'll be doing same car same track now in ACC The handling is just a little bit looser, so you don't quite have that road feel, but you, you, yeah, you can hear the side of the, the, the track when you run over it. So 
So coming to ACC, this game was released in May 2019. So it's literally, what, one year old. And that can probably be seen by its menus. You can see it's got a lot fresher look and feel as well. These again are the different modes there, career, single player, multiplayer, special events. There's your option menus. Uh, very, it's similar settings, I wouldn't say they're drastically different, but I do like the help on the right hand side where it explains what each setting does. Very, very much easier to navigate. And again, the controls for steering wheel, um, keyboard, a gamepad. You can set buttons again for each different, whatever buttons you've got. I'm not sure in the other two games if I had the same number of settings for the mappings and macros and so on that you could set. I just can't recall. I see in this game it's very clearly visible. It's all these ones I'm talking about. These are the different general settings that you can set. The assists obviously affect your scoring uh, for experience in the races. You don't want to overset them as you gain experience. These are the different HUD settings. So these are all standard HUD settings. I see less customization. There's not as much third party availability here. You purchase basically packs. Um, and, and sort of, yeah, should I say paid additions to the game and I haven't seen as much as I've seen for the others. So maybe less flexibility in that but I think the key thing with ACC is it specializes for GT3 racing. If you don't want to do GT3, if you want to do Formula One or uh, Dirt Track or something else then ACC is not the game for you but what they have done is they've taken the realism and the racing simulation to a very high level for GT3 racing. So you are going to find here mainly GT3 and apparently some new GT4 cars possibly coming out. Um, but not that variety of tracks and cars that you found in the other two games. So that, that's one key difference here. So there's Kailami. And these are basically the tracks that you can choose from at the moment. There's quite a good variety of tracks I think. And for GT3 racing it's fantastic. I mean if that's what you're into this is the game to go for. Without a doubt. The nice thing with ACC of course is, and R Factor 2, is you buy once, apart from the few editions you might purchase, the thing is you can race and race and race as much as you want. There's no monthly subscription. And that's what I like about these games. So here's the Porsche 911. Just want to show you the showroom view and, and some of the custom. You, there's, one thing you can get is a lot of skins and mods for the look and feel of the car actually. Uh, which is also present in the other games and I should say that Assessor Corsa itself has also got a similar showroom, options of showrooms and the beautiful views of the cars. Here I'm just showing the look around view inside the vehicle and obviously if you had something like Oculus Rift this is what you'd be looking around like if you were actually busy racing. Obviously I can't do that while I'm racing, you've got to hold the wheel for dear life. But this is the quality of the graphics you see on the vehicles it's absolutely stunning they use proper drivers to assist with the placement of all the knobs and the buttons and even the sounds of the vehicles how they sound and, and handle so they've really taken the realism to uh, as high as you can really go I suppose in um, desktop racing And this is the range of cars. Um, it's not a very big range, but yeah, that's the GT3 range. They're, each of them is a very, very good car though to race. You can also choose the look and feel of the character, your, the suit you're wearing, the helmet you're wearing. I didn't show it here now, but the, yeah, that's also possible. So I think the visual out of the, from the, all three games, the visual aspects in this game is, is without a doubt the highest. Um, the tracks, the quality, the sound, um, that sort of thing. Like I said, the only limitation is it, it, it is GT3. There's the weather settings. You can also set some variance in the weather. And these are the realism settings. I 
I do know standard Rosetta Corso has also got a photo mode. You can take photorealistic photos, literally like a camera with HDR and all sorts of things. I haven't seen it in ACC yet, uh, but as I said, ACC standard graphics as they go is, is pretty good. So this is the startup screen now for Kailami, South Africa. And now what you want to look at is compare also the internal car graphics to what you saw on the track and the track that you saw in Assetto Corsa previously. You'll also hear a lot more ambient sounds and noises like announcements and that sort of thing. It's, it's got a nice sort of feel when, you, when you're getting in here. Um, oh yeah, so before you actually get going, this is also the car settings and tweaks you can do. Uh, I didn't see any tire settings. I can't. I can adjust tire temperatures and camber and pressures and that sort of thing, but I can't uh, choose tires. Seemingly, it could be that I'm on the easy settings. I'm not sure if I go for those the more difficult settings. It's possible that I do get one or two extra options. I'm not too sure. But a lot more information. I, I think it's a lot easier to tweak and see what you're doing here. I've heard rumors, of course, I'm not sure how much difference it really makes, but yeah, you know, you can only go so far in a desktop game. And listen to the sounds. So you'll see this, the heads up display again by standard. You've got the tires, you've got the key essentials on the bottom right, you've got uh, top left times and lap times and there's also tutorial running on the right under Mango HUD which in the training session you can achieve certain things just to improve your driving I'm going to be a little bit slippery here uh, jumping between cars and games but you'll see again the graphics in the car excellent everything is positioned where it's supposed to be it's good quality uh, on the HUDs aside on Mango HUD you can look at my frame rates per second it's averaging around about 100 to 125 which is pretty good considering what's all displaying on top of the screen, the overlays. I've still got to take this, well I haven't tried any of the cars yet actually in AI racing because it's got to then also display the opponents and that can also give you a bit of a hit in terms of frame rate. So that'll be a more truer comparison I suppose. So this is a replay now, just showing you some of the additional views you can get. There's also a helicopter view and some interesting in-car views as well. But why they? But I can see also why commentators and audiences like watching this. It is really optimized for, um, you know, sort of spectator viewing as well. The quality is good, the grass is very realistic. Not sure that we've got palm trees there in Joburg. I suppose they can go anywhere, but I'm not sure of those are on the track. So this is now a replay again of the same pulling away, but from inside the vehicle. And just look at how everything sort of moves realistically. You can hear all the track sounds as you're hitting the edge of the tracks. It gives a lot of feedback, I think, as well for the driver while you're driving. And yeah, so that's basically it, really. Um, they're actually all very enjoyable to play, but like I said, in summary, the, the mods and the uh, um, vast array of tracks and so on and cars is definitely R Factor 2 in Assetto Corsa. Uh, ACC is definitely newer, it's more specialized for GT3, does an excellent job of that. If you're not into GT3 then that's not going to be really your option. But yeah, so far I'm enjoying them and, and yeah, I'm playing all three really so I'll give feedback in future you know, if I pick up anything extra. 
but enjoy your day and see you in the next video.